Hey guys, Athena here. So today I just want to talk about Mythic Plus this week. So Mythic 20s have come out and new affixes have shown up and some new features. And I want to kind of cover what the affixes do, what some changes are, how you should kind of handle them as your team, and what to expect when you're trying to get up to Mythic 20. So first off, we have Tyrannical. So Tyrannical is pretty straightforward. This is just increasing the health and damage of the bosses. This week here, single target is very strong. You want to at least have one person dedicated to single target in your group, or at least three DPS that can do hybrid damage of single target and AOE. Next, we have Horde. So Horde is interesting. This makes it so that the more mobs that you pull, it increases all nearby allies damage dealt by 2% up to a maximum of 50%. This is to try and basically soft cap the tank from pulling too many mobs. In most cases, if you have a good tank, you can probably still manage a lot of these pulls. However, just keep in mind that the more mobs you pull, the stronger they're going to be, which means that you need to have your tank capable of handling those pulls. So tanks, if you're not able to handle it, just pull in smaller packs. It's a lot easier to manage. Next, we have killer bees. So killer bees are interesting. How this works is that when you're in combat, the more you stand still, killer bees will spawn, but you can attack and kill. They'll just target anybody. Once in a while, there is a chance to spawn a killer bee queen. If you kill the killer bee queen, this will make all bees disappear. It's very important that if you have a DPS that can do a very good snapshot burst, a lot of my Mythic Plus groups recently have been dedicating this to the melee DPS, but really anyone can do this. If you see a killer bee queen, kill it and move on. As for the other bees, honestly, they don't do a whole lot of damage. I would really just ignore them. Let AoE cleave kill them. If you have like Earthquake or any other AoE CC that can hit them, that's nice. But the healers can usually heal through this. Next is Sanguine. So this is your Mythic 10 level. So once you're on your Mythic 10 key, you've got Sanguine. This here works as when you kill a mob, that's going to lay down a pool. This is going to cause damage to you and heal enemy mobs for 1% of their maximum health up to a maximum amount based on the key level for every single level as long as they remain in effect and they'll last for 15 seconds. This is important that when you're doing big pulls to constantly move the mobs out of the pools. If you have a small enough pool, like group of mobs, so like let's say five mobs and you start killing them in it, you're not gonna notice that 1%. Your DPS can probably push through it, but if you're getting into really big pulls, you're gonna notice that mobs are just gonna keep healing and out healing the DPS. So you gotta kinda consistently move it. As well as if you're running with melees, Add a couple of these pools up and that's doing lots of damage and the healer is not going to be able to keep them up if they're also having to put high HPS output to anyone else on the team. So keep that in mind as the tank and melee just kind of be careful and keep in mind if you can be out of the pool, try and be out of the pool. Lastly, for Mythics 10 to 20, we have some new functionalities and features for champions. So champions are unique mobs that you have to kill five of in the dungeons. And you can tell these mobs apart by having their little wings that are showing the golden wings there on the champions. You, If you aren't sure of where to pull champions from, you can always go to a lower key, even a mythic zero. And these mobs will actually show the wings on them in the routing. If you're trying to plan or figure that out, hopefully we'll take some time in future videos to talk about new routings and champion routes uh, as they come along. So let's start going time with champions. So this week is Frostborn. Frostborn champions have three effects. First is at Mythic 14. This is going to make it so that when you start combat with them, you will start taking a ticking dot damage. If you stand still, this will ramp up to six stacks and deal constant damage. While also dealing a ton of damage, it's going to make it so it's impossible for you to actually move. It'll slow you down. It is imperative to spam your jump key or sidestep left and right, as this stacking damage can deal a lot of damage and put a lot of stress on your healer. Especially you healers, be careful. Healers like Champion of Justice, as well as Seed of Life, really high mobility healers are much more preferable on 14s and higher for the fact that you don't have to stand still and take the damage. However, other healers are perfectly fine. Just keep in mind to not have that stack reach max stack. For Mythic 17s and higher, you have the Frozen effect. This frozen effect is going to cause orb spawn around the champion consistently, and they're going to spin around. If you get hit by the orb, it'll do AOE damage and frost over you. Most times, this is really hard to avoid. I personally don't run too much around this effect. Just heal through it. DPS and tank and healer try to be as aware as you can and stay away from them. But you're going to get hit. It's going to happen. 
try and be in an open room versus a small tight corridor. This is going to be a big heal check for a lot of healers because it deals a ton of damage to everyone, especially if you're getting hit by multiple orbs. Lastly, on Mythic 20s only, you have Cryostasis. What happens here is that once you get the champion down to, I believe it's about 30% health, it'll go into a Cryostasis. This is going to cause it to keep healing while it's in this cryostasis. This is a DPS check. DPS, if you are in a big pack hole and you're cleaving the champion and the, cle and the champion goes into cryostasis, you need to switch to the champion and kill it. If you don't focus it and break the cryostasis, the champion will heal back to full health. This is a DPS race. You have to burst it down, get it out of cryostasis, and that's it. Mostly just a time waster. And if you're not paying ca uh, careful attention while you're doing a big cleave pull with a champion, it could cause a punishment of more time wasted. Anyways, guys, this is my quick guide to the new affixes for this week, champion effects and everything. Tell me what you guys think. If you want to see some more, like, comment, subscribe. Really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.